Hi, welcome back to 17 square meters garden. In today's video, I want to share with you a few tips on how to grow hellebores in pots. I'm sure that many of you are familiar with hellebores. They are available at the garden center in winter because that's when most of them are at their prime. And I bet that those of you who have traditional gardens probably have some of them tucked into your flower beds as well. I recently posted a picture on Instagram of my white hellebore and some people were surprised to see this plant being permanently planted in a pot and being grown on a balcony. So that's why today I want to share with you a few tips on how you can successfully grow them as well. So a few information about hellebores. They are evergreen so they keep their foliage year round. They are also really winter hardy. The, most of them are hardy down to zone 4 where winter temperatures are as cold as minus 25 degrees centigrade. There are different species and hybrids available. They come in different colors and they also bloom at slightly different times. They can bloom anywhere from December to sometime in March. They like to be grown in shade and part shade and they are really low maintenance plants, although during their first growing year they will need to be kept well watered, especially in spring and fall because that's when they are actively growing. In summer they are dormant so they don't need to be watered as much and after their first year when they establish they can tolerate some drought. They are rather resistant to pests and diseases Sometimes they can be bothered by slugs or caterpillars, but that's pretty much it. But also a very interesting thing that I noticed with my hellebores is they are always full of aphids. But aphids don't eat them, they are just using them as host plants and then they spread further in the garden. So that's something to keep in mind if that also happens to your hellebores as well. Fertilizing hellebores is not very different from fertilizing your other flowering plants, although they bloom at different time of year, so you will need to just adjust the fertilizing to a different seasons. Um, as I said, they are dormant in summer, so they don't need to be fertilized in summer. But when they wake up out of their dormancy in fall and they start to put leafy growth, it's good to fertilize them with appropriate grow fertilizer, so a fertilizer that will be rich in nitrogen. And when they bloom in winter and in spring, fertilize them with flowering fertilizer, so a fertilizer that will be more rich in potassium and phosphorus. So when you bring your hellebore from the garden center and you want to repot it, choose a medium-sized container. And I'm not going to tell you exactly how many liters because it's not really important. Just choose a medium-sized container that you have available. Hellebores also like rich soil, so don't pot them in something like 100% peat because they will not really appreciate it. Choose potting mix that is rich in organic matter, so something that contains either worm castings or compost, and something that also has perlite that will help with drainage and soil aeration. So when it comes to propagating hellebores, you can do it in two ways, either by division or by seeds. Propagating from seeds can also be a bit tricky because your hellebore will produce seeds in spring, but when you will harvest your seeds in spring and you will sow them, they will not germinate right away. They will germinate most likely in fall, if they germinate at all, and then they will enter the winter as seedlings, so they will not produce any flowers, so you will need to wait another year for them to grow a little bit bigger and to then hopefully to flower. So up to you if it's worth the effort. Two last things that I want to share about hellebores is they are amazing flowers to grow in winter because they provide for pollinators. Some pollinators remain active throughout the winter months and because there's not a lot of flowers that bloom at this time of year, it's great to have some hellebores planted on your balcony or in your garden. And although hellebores are really amazing plants and there's so many benefits of growing them, they are toxic to humans and to animals. So that's something to be mindful of if your children and your pets have access to your plants. So I hope that you enjoyed today's video that maybe I inspired you to grow some hellebores on your balcony or in your garden. Let me know if you grow them. Thank you for joining me today and I will see you in my next video. Bye!